Hello friends! You have a grid-based user interface and you want to be able to drag and drop things from one cell to another. There are other videos out there that will show you how to move a texture from one control to another but aren't really useful beyond that. After completing my drag and drop mechanic, I'll take it one step further and make this system able to communicate with other nodes such as an inventory or puzzle script. I'm using buttons as my grid cells, since you can easily give them different style boxes that react to mouse hovering, clicking, and grabbing focus. To represent something in this grid, I'm using a button's icon property and assigning it a region of an atlas texture, which is an imported sprite sheet. So when clicking and dragging from any of these buttons, I'll need to retrieve the button's icon, create a preview of it, check if it can be dragged onto a button, then move the icon to the new button. Attaching a script to the button, I'll name it Drag Drop Cell, and give it a class name at the top of the script. There are three functions of the control class we need to override to allow dragging and dropping. Get Drag Data will be called when the player clicks and starts dragging the mouse. It gives us the local mouse position where they clicked, which we don't need, so preceding it with an underscore will mark it as unused and this returns a variant, which can be anything we want, but represents all of the information that we need to complete the drag later. But if we return null from this function, the drag will not be started. Can drop data will be called while holding down the mouse button while dragging and hovering over this button. It also provides the local mouse position, which again we don't need, but also provides the same variant returned by the get drag data function. If this function returns true, then dropping the dragged data onto this button will be allowed, and if false, it will not. Returning false will display a prohibited symbol in place of the mouse cursor. Lastly, the drop data function will be called when releasing the mouse button, if can drop data returned true. As always, we don't need the local mouse position, and it also gives us the same data variant that was returned by the get drop data function. This function does not return anything. Let's start with the get drag data function. I don't want to allow dragging an empty cell, so if this button doesn't have an icon, I'll return null and not allow the drag to start. Otherwise, I'll return the button itself as the data variant. To have a drag preview displayed beside the mouse cursor, we can create a new texture rect node, set its texture to match this button's icon, and call the set drag preview function passing the preview texture rect as an argument. Now, clicking and dragging any of the buttons that have an icon will start a drag with a preview, but we aren't allowed to drop it anywhere yet. Next is the can drop function. I only want to allow dropping data here if the data variant is another drag drop cell, which we can verify using the class name. I also don't want to allow dropping any cell onto itself, so if either of these are true, I'll return false. Otherwise, I'll return true to allow dropping. Grabbing focus here will also draw the focus border around this button. And lastly, the drop data function. All we need to do is swap the icons of the button that the drag started from, which is the data variant, and the button where the drag ended, which is this button itself. So declaring a temporary holder for the icon of type Texture2D, I'll perform a simple swap of the two icons. Now we can drag and drop the icons between any of these buttons. This works great, but it isn't really that useful, because it can't be connected to any other systems, such as the player's inventory or perhaps a puzzle script. For that, we'll need another script. I'll attach mine to the grid container parent node, and give it a class name of Drag Drop Grid. The entire purpose of this script will be to emit a signal when any drag is completed, so that signal can be connected to any other script. So it will pass the grid positions where the drag started from and where it ended, as vector2 integers. To make accessing the cells easier, I'll also create my own 2D array to hold the cells. Then in the ready function, I'll append an empty array to the cells array for every column in the grid container. Declaring a pair of integers for the current row and column, both starting at zero, I can then iterate through all of the grid container's children. I will append each to the array representing their column, then increment column by one. 
When column reaches the total number of columns in the grid, I'll reset it back to zero and increment row. Not only does this give me access to each cell based on its coordinates, but I can also tell each cell its grid position. Switching over to the drag drop cell script, I'll declare a new variable for the grid position of this cell, of type vector2 integer, to hold this information, as well as a signal named dragged, which will be emitted when a drag is completed, passing the grid position of where the drag started and where it ended, both as vector2 integers. This signal can be emitted at the end of the drop data function, passing data.gridposition and self.gridposition. Back in the drag drop grid script, we can copy and paste the exact same signal, then connect each cell's dragged signal to this script's dragged signals emit function. Now the grid container will emit a signal anytime a drag is completed by any of its children, telling us which cell the drag started from and where it ended. This signal can easily be connected to, for example, a script for the player's inventory to rearrange its contents, or a puzzle which will react to its pieces being moved. I hope you found this video helpful for implementing a drag and drop grid system. If you like game development content for Godot, please consider subscribing, or joining my Patreon, where you'll get full access to all of my paid courses, early access to these videos, plus some exclusive content. If there's any other game mechanics you'd like to see me build, let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.